come onto your back and bring your arms down by your side. And just let your eyes close. I'm just gonna make sure everybody's muted. Yeah. Awesome. And come onto your back, let your eyes close, let your palms face the sky. <clears throat> let your feet relax open, just begin to breathe in and out through the nose. Softening as you exhale. Lifting the chest as you inhale and then drawing everything in as you exhale. Just allowing yourself to settle into the space that you've created for yourself today. And then we're going to reach the arms all the way over the head and just stretch from your fingers to your toes, just lengthening all the way. And then hug your knees into your chest. And we'll just do some circles with the knees, so circling to the right a few times. And then circling back to the left. Good. And then we're going to find ourselves back to center with the knees. And cross your right knee over your left. And if you can, you're going to grab your ankles or the outsides of your feet and just draw your heels in towards you. So go Mukhasana on your back. Breathe here. Good. And then we're gonna switch. So then bring the left knee on top of the right, grab the outsides of the feet or the ankles, draw the heels in if you'd like. Everything comes in, breathe. So this week, my, my quote or my theme is um, a quote from Gandhi, and it, it sort of is an extension of my theme from last week, but it's also definitely a standalone theme. So let's release that out. Set your feet to the mat. We're going to come into our first bridge pose, so whatever that is for you, press into the feet. Lift your hips up, walk the arms, your shoulders underneath you, interlace your hands, press down through the feet, and lift up through the heart, and just breathe here. Good. Beliefs create our thoughts, and our thoughts create our feelings and emotions, and those create our actions, and our actions create our character, and our character creates our destiny. So to me, this is a truly powerful practice to practice on the mat. Slowly lower down out of your bridge pose. And let's draw the knees into your chest and float the knees over to the right. And let your arms come in a T and let your head come to the left. Because what it, what it reminds us is that we have, everything starts with the stories that we tell ourselves in the mind. And sometimes those stories are incredibly powerfully true, and sometimes they're not. Draw your knees back to center, float them over to the other side, change your gaze over your right shoulder. But from what we believe, the stories we tell ourselves, that's where our feelings come from, our thoughts, our actions, our character. And that's what shapes what's next, our destiny. So on the mat today, maybe there's something, draw your knees back into your chest. Again, we're going to cross the right knee over the left, but this time maybe you're going to come into a full eagle leg, so those toes tuck underneath your calf, they may not, just cross the knees, all good. Arms come in a T, and now we're gonna wrap the right arm underneath the left, and find ego arms here. 
So as you inhale, we'll lengthen. We'll tap the toes to the floor on the fingers behind the head. And then as you exhale, we're going to squeeze it all in. Inhale, nice and long. Exhale, draw and round. And again, inhale. And exhale. And again, inhale, lengthen. And exhale, squeeze it all in. All right, unwrap the arms, unwrap the legs, let's switch. Left knee comes on top of right. Left arm comes underneath right. And once again, inhale, tap the toes to the floor, fingers behind. Exhale, lift the head and the chest, squeeze it in. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, round. And again, inhale, nice and long. Exhale, we're going to squeeze and lift. And one more, inhale. And one more, exhale, squeeze. Unwrap the arms, unwrap the legs, hug the knees into your chest. Let's rock the whole length of the spine. So rock backwards or all the way up, get into the upper back, all the way down. And then we're going to meet on our hands and knees. So cross at the ankles and come out to your hands and knees. And just inhale, arch the spine. And exhale, we're gonna round, curl. Inhale, arch the spine, lift the chest. Exhale, we'll round, curl, tuck the head. So a few more of those. So here's our first opportunity to practice this idea. Right? Because maybe we came on the mat today with the belief that cat-cow just needs to be this linear action, right? So you arch and you round, back and forth. But what if that wasn't true? What if you could shift from side to side? What if you could use circles with your hips all the way back? What if when you rounded into cat and came halfway to child's pose, it really lengthened, lengthened through the lower spine? What if we did all of that? How would that change our thoughts about this moment? Right? When we're doing something of service to the body, what feels good? Maybe that'll change our feelings about being here on the mat this morning and our actions, right, in service of ourselves. And then once we do that, it changes our whole perspective, our character, and perhaps it will have bigger implications in the body. Now, of course, every time I draw this chain reaction in our physical practice, it might seem like an exaggeration, but it's to show us as we start to learn more about how to identify the truths in our beliefs and the not truths, how it can really be powerful off the mat. So let's come back to a neutral spine. Inhale, and then let's find a cow. So a true cow, arch the spine. And then as you exhale, we're gonna round, curl the toes under and find our downward dog. So pressing back into downward dog. Again, we have created a belief that this is downward dog, and it is. But pedaling out through the feet is also downward dog. Shifting from side to side is also downward dog. And for a moment, let's walk the hands close together so your thumbs touch each other, and then walk your feet close together so your big toes touch each other. And press into the hands and back into the heels. This is also a version of downward dog. When we create some flexibility in our beliefs, things happen. We have changes in our thoughts, in our feelings, in our actions, in our character, in our destiny. Walk the hands back to hip distance, or sorry, shoulder distance. Walk the feet back to hip distance. And we're going to start to walk the feet towards the hands. So little baby steps, walk the feet towards the hands. As you come up to the top of the mat, bend your knees, let your chest line on your thighs, bring your arms behind your thighs, let your head shake out. Let's just breathe here. Good. And 
and then let the arms go. We're going to slowly, slowly, slowly roll it all the way up. All the way up to standing. And bring your hands to your heart and close your eyes for a moment and just set your intention for your practice. Perhaps there is a story, something off the mat, that you could ask yourself, is this true? Is this belief about this person, this relationship, this situation in my life, is it really true? And what if it weren't? How would that change my feelings, my thoughts, my actions with regard to that? This is what this mindfulness yoga practice offers us the ability to do, to answer that question. And then open your eyes and let's inhale, bring the arms all the way around and up. Good, look up, shoulders soft. As you exhale, we're gonna forward fold. As you inhale, we're gonna find a flat back, so lengthen here. And as you exhale, we're gonna step to a high plank. So just hold your plank. Press back through those heels, spread through the fingers, keep the hips. We're in a diagonal line from head up to heels, right? Two more breaths here. And then we're gonna lower all the way to the mat. So if you feel like using your knees, go ahead. Lower all the way to the mat. As you inhale, keep the hands right underneath the shoulders, lift the chest, roll the shoulder blades together. Baby Cobra. As you exhale, lower it all the way down. And then when you inhale, you're gonna press into the hands a little bit more, lift the chest, let the shoulders soften, let the heart lift, gaze forward, high cobra, and let's exhale it back to downward dog. Five breaths here, shake it out. Pedaling a little bit from side to side, maybe trying to work those heels towards the mat. So maybe we have this belief that if we can't get those heels all the way down, there's something wrong. But what if that weren't true because it's not true? How would that change your perspective in downward dog? Maybe it would allow you to focus a little more attention in the hands, spreading through the fingers, drawing those shoulders back a little bit, rolling out through the shoulders and in through the thumbs. And then on your next inhale, high on the toes, exhale, knees bend, hop, step, or float the feet to the hands. Inhale, we're gonna find a flat back here. And as you exhale, we're gonna forward fold, soften through the knees if you need to, it's all good. Beautiful. And then as you inhale, we're gonna come all the way around and up, Pop, palms touch. And as you exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Okay, so Namaskar A, again, a little faster this time. So inhale, arms around and up. Exhale, we're gonna forward fold. Inhale, we'll find a flat back, so lengthen here. Exhale, we're gonna step back to plank and lower through Chaturanga. Inhale, we're gonna come into a high cobra, chest lifts. Exhale, we're gonna roll it back down our dog, lengthen, spread through the fingers, soften through the shoulders, and breathe. Five breaths. Five inhales, five exhales. Five opportunities to ask yourself that question, is it true? The expectations I set for myself on my mat, are they steeped in judgment? Can I let go of that? Inhale, high on the toes. Exhale, knees bend. Hop, step, float the feet to the hands. Inhale, we're going to find a flat back here. Exhale, we're going to forward fold, let the head go. Inhale, we're going to sit right back into our chair, Utkatasana. So reach the arms, soften through the shoulders, press back into the heels, lift the chest. And then as you exhale, we're gonna fold again. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, flows us through plank to chaturanga or whatever version of vinyasa serves you. Right? So we also create this 
expectation, this story that we have to do everything the teacher says. And maybe there are times when that is true, a true story, but right now that's not a true story. Okay, so make your way back to downward dog. And we're gonna plant the left foot and step the right foot forward. So warrior one, arms are gonna reach all the way up to the sky, bend into your right knee, reach the arms up. Good, as you exhale, hands to the mat. As you inhale, step to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, high cobra, upward dog. Exhale, it back, downward dog. Virabhadrasana D, second side. So plant the right foot, step the left foot forward. Inhale, the arms up, warrior one. Shoulders are soft, gaze is forward. And then exhale, hands to the mat. Inhale to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, high cobra. Exhale, back downward dog. Okay, we're gonna come back to warrior one first side. So plant your left foot, step your right foot forward, warrior one. Inhale here. But this time as you exhale, we're gonna open to warrior two. So front heel lines up with back heel or arch. Arms are nice and strong, gaze over your front fingers. Bend into the knee. As you inhale, turn your palms up. Let's reverse the warrior, but don't forget about that right knee as you look up to the sky. And then as you exhale, right forearm is going to come to right thigh. Left arm reaches up to the sky. So let's start here. Left arm reaching up to the sky. And then maybe we're going to float it over the ear and look up. Good. So reaching through that left arm, looking up to the sky, pressing out through that back, outer edge of the foot. Let's come on back up, hands to the hips, straighten your front leg, parallel your feet. So your right toes turn in towards your left, navel back to spine, shoulder blades draw towards each other, look up. And as you exhale, we're gonna fold. Maybe the hands slide down the legs. Maybe they come all the way to the floor. Inhale, press into the fingers and look forward. Exhale, let's fold. For prasarita, it's the first one. So maybe again, surrender your belief or your expectation that the head has to come to the mat. It doesn't. Maybe you want to keep a little bend in the knees. Maybe you want to shift a little bit from side to side. All of that, it's all true stories. Because right. you can see how if, if our hamstrings were not ready to be totally straight and we jammed ourselves into it anyway, how it wouldn't necessarily make us feel good that we're forcing it. And there may be that action may cause reactions that don't serve us, right? And there's that destiny piece. From here, we're going to walk the hands forward towards the right foot. Walk your right foot out towards the edge of your mat. Lift your left heel off the mat. And we're coming into a high lizard. Right? So feel free to bend and straighten that front leg if you want to. You may not want be ready to come onto your forearms yet, but if you want to, feel free to do so. Okay? Maybe come onto your forearms. Let your right knee squeeze in towards your midline. Press out through that back heel, breathe here. And then if you do, ha if you did happen to get onto those forearms, let's press back up into the hands and we're gonna meet in downward dog. So if you'd like a vinyasa, go for it. Float the right leg back to meet the left. Exhale through your chaturanga. Inhale through your high cobra or upward dog and find your way back to downward dog. Good. So we're going to do that same thing, second side. Plant the right foot, step the left foot forward. Let's find warrior one. As you inhale, as you exhale, we're going to come to warrior two. Right, so bending into this left knee, reaching the arms, being nice and mindful in the arms. 
and then come into your reverse warrior. So look up, reach the left arm all the way up. And then we're left forearm comes to left thigh, right arm reaches up to the sky. So I always like to start with the arm up because it really triggers this abdominal action here. And then we hold on to that as we float the arm over the ear and we're lengthening through the whole right side body. Looking up to the sky, breathe. Don't forget about the left knee. Good, as you exhale, look down. As you inhale, let's bring the hands to the hips. Let's straighten that front leg, parallel the feet. And we're gonna interlace the hands behind the back now. So roll those shoulder blades together. We're getting ready for our second prasarita. So look up to the sky. Inhale, exhale, let's forward fold. Bring the arms off the back, shake out the head. Breathe here. Again, the story that we tell ourselves about fan pose may, not, may or may not be true. Feel free to put a slight bend in the knees. Feel free to shift a little bit. Feel free to not worry about what happens with that head. Right? Does it have to come to the mat? No, of course not. Good. From here, we're going to let the arms come down and walk them forward inside your left foot. So you're facing the front of your mat, back heels off the mat in your lizard. Maybe you stay here in a high lizard and you feel like shifting back and forth from bending to straightening. Maybe you're ready to come onto your forearms or put your forearms on blocks. Breathe here. And then press up into the hands and we're gonna meet in downward dog. So you again decide how you get there. If you're gonna step back and move through or if you feel like meeting us in downward dog. Let's take five breaths here. So five breaths could be child's pose, right? Could be whatever you need it to be today. So perhaps that expectation that you set for yourself on your mat, maybe it's true. Maybe you just said, I wanna come and honor myself today, do what I can do, let go of what, I, what isn't serving me. But if there was another story you told, Perhaps ask yourself that question, is it true? Good, as you are now gonna come high on the toes as you exhale. So sorry, if you're in child's pose, make your way back to downward dog and then inhale high on the toes, exhale, bend your knees. Let's hop, step or float the feet up to the top of the mat. Inhale, we're gonna find our flat back. As you exhale, we're gonna fold, soften through the knees, let the head go. Allow your feet to be parallel because as you inhale, we're gonna sit into Utkatasana. So come all the way back to Utkatasana. Good. And then from here, we're gonna bring our ego into it. So arms come out to the side like airplane wings. Right arm's gonna wrap, sorry, right leg is gonna wrap around left squeezing those inner thighs towards each other, so rolling them in. And then right arm's gonna come underneath left for eagle arms. Okay, sitting a little bit deeper, squeezing through those inner thighs. And then from here, we're gonna transition our way into eagle warrior one. So the legs unwrap, but the arms are gonna stay wrapped. Right leg's gonna step back for eagle warrior one. And perhaps we're gonna add kind of a version of reverse warrior here. So you bend into the knee, you look all the way up to the sky. Keep the belly nice and strong. And then we'll open to warrior two. So I'm just gonna shift my position, but I'm uh, sorry, you hold on to your eagle arms. So it's eagle armed warrior two. Good. And then we're gonna straighten the front leg. Parallel the feet. Look up to the sky as you inhale. 
Begin to hinge and fold as you exhale, holding on to those eagle arms. Just a couple more breaths here. Try to press into the space between your shoulder blades. So we're going to round a little bit. Good. And then unwrap the arms. Set them to the floor. Let the head go. Surrender that a little bit. And then bring your hands to your hips and we're going to come all the way up. And you're going to come to warrior two at the back of your mat. So I'm turning my right foot now forward for warrior two. So you're going to be facing away from your front of your mat. Right, so your belief that that was the front of your mat is changing now because now this is the new front of your mat. Warrior two to the new front of your mat. From here, we're gonna come right into half moon. So bring your right hand to the floor, left leg's gonna lift, left arm's gonna lift, look up. Acknowledge this lifted left leg. Try to bring it up as high as you can. Breathe here, and then let the left hand come down with the right, and come into a standing split. So breathe here. Good. And we're going to bend the right knee, set the left toes long behind, so you're still facing your new front of your mat. Left hand down, right arm up, let's find a twist here. Reach through those fingers up to the sky. If you feel like a little more, you can bend and wrap that upper arm. Maybe rest the top of your hands on your middle back. Breathe here. As you exhale, set the right hand down. As you inhale, step to your plank. You're still facing the back of your mat, which is now the front, right? Our story has changed. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, high cobra, lift. And then exhale it back, downward dog. Good. So inhale, high on the toes, exhale, knees bend. We're going to hop, step, float the feet up to the new front of the mat. Inhale, lengthen here. And we're going to exhale and fold. So sit right back into your chair. And we're going to come into Eagle second side. So arms are out in the T, left leg's going to wrap around right, sit into that squeezing. Left arm underneath right, shoulders are soft, squeeze, belly draws in. Good. Two more breaths here. And then we hold on to the arms, but the legs are going to change. So the left leg wraps back behind, we're in a warrior one, inhale. But first we're here in warrior one, then we draw a little bit into that idea for a reverse warrior with eagle arms. So the arms are up and over the head, knee bends, and then holding onto the arms, we come to warrior two. All right, so right heel lines up with back arch, We're going to straighten the front leg, parallel the feet. Inhale, look all the way up. As you exhale, let's hinge and fold, letting the head go. Again, here we are in our eagle arms. Shaking out the head. Maybe we're going to round through that upper back a little bit. Breathe here. Two more breaths. And then we unwrap the arms. Again, set them down. Let's walk them forward this time, pressing into both hands. So it's like a downward dog in terms of your arms, but your legs are nice and wide. Good. Breathe here. And then walk the hands back. They're going to come all the way to the hips. You're going to rise up. And then your left foot's going to turn 
to warrior two. So you're gonna find that you're facing back towards your old front of your mat, warrior two. And then from here, we're gonna move into half moon. So when you're ready, you're gonna set the left, the left hand down, lift the right leg, float the right arm up. Maybe that right leg lifts nice and high up. Flex the foot, breathe here. And then let the right hand come down. We're in our standing split for a moment. Bending, maybe a slight bend in that left knee if you'd like. Whatever you need it to be. And then we'll bend a little bit deeper, set the right toes behind you, nice long lunge. Right hand stays down, left arm reaches up. If you want to, you're gonna bend the elbow and let that palm, the top of your hand, just rest in your middle back somewhere. Breathe here. Good. As you exhale, set the left hand down. As you inhale, we're gonna find our way to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, high cobra. And exhale it back. Five breaths here in downward dog. So you decide what that is for you today. Is that a child's pose? Maybe we need to change that story a little bit. Two more breaths here. And when you're ready, inhale, we're gonna come high on the toes. As you exhale, bend your knees, you're gonna hop, step, or float the feet to the hands. Inhale, we'll find again a flat back, so we lengthen here. And then as you exhale, we're gonna forward fold, let the head just go. As you inhale, we're gonna come back into our chair. So Utkatasana, sit back into that, lift the chest, soften through the shoulders, reach the arms up. And now the right ankle is gonna come to the left thigh. So here we are in our Utkatasana, but we're with in a figure four, right? Right foot's nice and flexed. Sitting back into that, let's bring the hands to the heart. Begin to shift forward a little bit. And we're gonna explore floating the right leg back through warrior three until it finds its way back into a lunge. So maybe that was a quick transition, maybe it was a slow one. Arms reach up, shoulders are soft. Our first crescent warrior today. And then let your hands come to your heart. We're gonna twist. So right elbow comes outside left knee. If you need to drop the back knee, feel free to do so. Great. Squeezing and rolling through those inner thighs, just like we do an eagle, right? They're both moving in towards your center. That helps to stabilize you. Belly's nice and draw, drawn in too. Two more breaths here. Good. And then as you exhale, look down. As you inhale, we're gonna to come to warrior two to the new front of your mat, <laughs> AKA the back of your mat. Good. And then from here, the palms are gonna to face to the side. We're gonna sweep the left arm to line up with the right. And as you do that, that back heel lifts. So you're reaching, it's like you're holding this beach ball that you want to hand to someone else. But the belly is nice and strong here. So we're in that diagonal line. Good. And then set the left hand down and let the right arm come up. The left hand's a little forward of your right foot because we're going to float into our revolve top moon. Draw your gaze up to the sky. Maybe you can see your thumb. Maybe that left leg is lifting. Two more breaths here. Good. Top hand's gonna come down. So let's, we're back in our standing split. 
If you want to, we're gonna just explore handstand switches, right? So maybe one leg comes up and the other one comes down. If that doesn't seem fun, no worries. We're gonna end up in our triangle forward bend over the front leg, so you go right there. But if you feel like switching, one comes up, the other comes down. Back and forth, right? Just a little play time. Maybe you came to your mat with the belief that you can't hop up into a handstand. Maybe that's not true, right? So we're ending up with the right foot down, left foot back three feet, fold. Breathing here. Everybody looks really good. Good, Madoka. Good, Emily. So left foot's gonna step up to right. We're still facing the new front of our mat, right? Our story changed about what's the front and what's the back. And we're gonna come back into Utkatasana. So find your way to Utkatasana. And then bring your left ankle to your right thigh and let's sit a little deeper into this chair. Flexing your left foot. Hands will come to the heart. Maybe that prompts us to hinge forward a little bit. Belly's engaged. As we explore floating this left leg back into warrior three, all right, here we go, with the intention of setting those toes back down into a high crescent warrior, arms come up. So again, you're facing away from me. So you're listening and creating your own story, right? It's okay, sometimes things change, we are flexible. Hands come to the heart, left elbow is going to tuck outside the right knee now. Look up to the sky. Draw your gaze up, keep the hands pressing together and the right elbow up. Squeeze through the left leg. As you exhale, look down. As you inhale, we're going to come to warrior two facing your old front, right? So your original front of your mat. Left toes are facing forward, arms reaching forward and back, bend into the knee. And then face your palms to the side. And we'll sweep the right arm to be in line with the left. And as you do that, you're lifting off the back heel. So we're holding this beach ball, we're trying to hand this beach ball to somebody out of our reach. Navel's engaged, shoulders are soft, arms are strong. Good, we're getting into the lats here. And then from there, right hand's gonna plant in front of left foot, but to the side, to set up for our revolved half moon. Left arm reaches up, engage through your right buttocks, Float your gaze up to that thumb, if you can. Good, breathing here. And then bring that left hand down. So here we are back in our standing split. Feel free to stay here. Feel free to come into your triangle forward bend. Just make sure your feet have a little bit of space width-wise between them as you fold. And then, of course, if you want to play with those handstand switches, again, that's an option always. Right? One, arm, one leg up, the other one down. One leg up, the other one down. No stress. Right? And we'll meet in that triangle forward bend. 
left foot forward. Two more breaths here. Okay, so step the right foot up to meet the left. Now you're facing the original front of your mat, right? We're in our forward bend. As you inhale, we're gonna come into Ujjkatasana again. I'm just gonna face you guys. And we're gonna have the right leg wrap around the left for eagle legs. Arms out to the side, right arm underneath, left for eagle arms. This time, if it's available, you're gonna to work to hinge forward. Maybe those elbows come over the knees. Two more breaths here. And then unwrap the arms, unhook the toes so that the right toes tap the floor. We're gonna end up in a cross-legged seat. Right arm, right leg over left. Good. Yay. Left hand is gonna come to the right knee or the elbow is gonna come to the knee, right? Right arm is gonna come behind. As you inhale, we're gonna get nice and tall. As you exhale, twist. Again, inhale, lengthen, and exhale, twist. And inhale, lengthen, and exhale, twist. Let's walk the arms all the way over to the other side. Just come into this little counter stretch. And then we're gonna come back. So options here to twist a little bit more, awesome. That is a wonderful story, that is good. If you feel like playing with your arm balance today, here goes. So if you wanna do your, an arm balance, you're gonna come up on this left um, shin, okay? And we're creating this little shelf, see? So your left arm is gonna to come to your right knee and your right elbow is gonna to come to your right hip. And then as you begin to come down, you might lift. Last little piece of this might be that you tuck your toes, your right toes underneath your left calf. Okay, so it's eagle side bakasana. Up to you, squeeze through the belly, all good here. And we're gonna meet back into that seated twist again. As we stand up, you're gonna keep a cross of your ankles. So hands come forward, we'll stand up, right ankles over left, let's fold forward here. Really nice, three more breaths here. And then make your way up. We'll uncross the legs. We're gonna come right back into chair. So sit back into your Utkatasana. And then we're gonna take the left leg and wrap it around the right. Arms in a T, left arm underneath right. Squeeze the inner thighs. Maybe tuck the elbows over the knees. Gazing to the floor, squeeze and breathe. Two more breaths here. And then untuck your left toes. If they were tucked, tap them to the floor. Unwrap the arms. We're coming into our seated twist. Left hand comes behind, right hand comes to left knee or elbow to the knee. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. And again, inhale, nice and long. Exhale, we're gonna twist. And again, inhale. And exhale. And then walk the arms 
all the way around. Find that little counter stretch. Good. So, either you're going to twist a little bit more, all good. Or you're going to play maybe with your arm balance. If you're going to play with the arm balance, you're going to come onto the right shin. And as you do that, this left thigh becomes a little bit of a shelf. You're going to rest the shelf onto your elbows. Right? So elbows come to the hip and to the knee. Then press into the hands. Think about chaturanga arms as you come forward. Maybe feet lift, head hovers. Maybe you're going to tuck the foot behind the calf or your eagle version of side bakasana. When you're ready, make your way back. And we're going to come up into that forward bend, but we're going to keep the ankles crossed. So left ankle's on top of right this time. Hold. Shake out the head. And breathe. Good. And then uncross your ankles. Let's slowly roll up. Maybe a slight bend in the knees as you roll all the way up to standing. And then inhale, bring the arms all the way around and up. And as you exhale, we're going to forward fold. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. As you exhale, step to your plank. Let's lower all the way onto the belly. Flatten onto the tops of the feet. Keep the hands right underneath the shoulders. Keep the chin tucked into the chest. As you inhale, we're going to lift into a little baby cobra. So roll your shoulder blades towards each other. Look forward. Good. Let's add the legs now. So soften through the buttocks as you lift the legs, which is very hard to do. Good. And then exhale, lower everything down. We're going to do it the opposite way this next time. So you're going to start with the legs, lifting the legs. Light in the buttocks, then the chest, then the head. Then let's bring the arms out like airplane wings and interlace the hands behind the back. This is just a nice counter stretch to all those eagle arms that we did today. So really draw the arms back, lift the chest. One more inhale here and lower everything down. Pick one ear and bring it to the mat. Let your arms come alongside you and breathe. So wiggling out the hips a little bit. And then switch and bring the opposite ear to the mat. Just a couple of breaths here, even in the neck. And then we're going to make our way back into a wide-legged child's pose. Right, so draw the knees, the hips back to the heels, knees are wide, arms are forward. Good, breathe, reaching the arms forward. And we'll press from here into downward dog. So curl the toes under, press into the hands, find your downward dog. And let the right leg lift. And as it does, you're going to just stack the hip and the knee, flex the foot, press through both hands. And then draw that right knee forward towards your right wrist, ankle towards your left wrist. Let's come into our pigeon pose. So when you're ready, begin to fold forward into pigeon. And we tend to store a lot of our stuff in our hips. Okay? A lot of our beliefs in our hips. 
things that we hold on to, stuff that serves us and stuff that does not. So beliefs create our thoughts, and thoughts create our feelings and emotions. And those create our actions, and our actions create our character, and our character creates our destiny. So perhaps draw yourself back to your intention for your practice today. Maybe there's that story, that belief, that you've told yourself that you've over and over again that may or may not be completely true. So the example I've been using this week is just, it's an easy one. There's so many, but on Wednesday when I was teaching my class, I was just having this like crazy wiggly day. I was not stable in my practice. And I went back to this very familiar story or belief that as a 16 year veteran yoga teacher that I'm not allowed to have wiggly days, that I should be able to balance on command. My body should be able to do what it needs to do when I need it to, right? And I had to pull back from that and say, is that true? Is that a true story? And when I realized that that's actually not a true story and that I'm not a machine and that all the experience in the world doesn't mean that I'm not gonna have days where my body is, is not wanting to do what I want it to do. <laughs> and as soon as I changed and I recognized that that story is not true, all of my anxiety and frustration started to dissipate. I had those feelings. And I stopped trying to force my body into doing something that it didn't, shouldn't do today, you know, that day. So those actions changed. And my body thanked me by being available to me the next day, which it may not have been if I had not pulled back. And that just changed the flow of my destiny of the week, right? Because if I wasn't able to teach the next day or today, or if I was in pain, that would affect what I was putting out in the world, what I was giving to my students, right? So that's just an example of how this works. Make your way back to downward dog, shake out the right leg. And we're gonna do the same thing on the left. So lift the left leg, bend the knee. Let the left hip stack, press through both hands, open here. And then draw your hips back to center. Let your left knee come behind your left wrist, ankle come behind your right wrist. Second side, pigeon pose, hold. Three more breaths on this side. And then slowly make your way back to downward dog and shake out the left leg. And set the left foot down. We're gonna roll forward to plank for the last time. Roll forward and lower all the way onto your belly and then flip right onto your back. 
come onto your back and bend your knees and plant your feet. So we're coming back around to where we started our practice today, bridge pose. If you want another back bend, that's fine too. As you press into the feet, we're gonna lift the hips. We're gonna walk the shoulder blades towards each other. We're gonna interlace the hands maybe, pressing down into the feet and breathe here. And then release your hands, roll your shoulder blades out, slowly lower all the way down. Good. And let's draw the knees back into our chest. And float your knees over to the right. And let your arms come in a T and your head look over to the left. Final spinal twist. And then draw your knees back to center, float them over to the other side, change your gaze. And then bring your knees back to center and we're gonna float the legs down, bring the arms down. And close your eyes. And perhaps let go of this journey in the body. This idea of beliefs lead to thoughts, which leads to feelings, which leads to actions, which leads to character, which leads to destiny, right? Practice that a lot in the body. Maybe again, bring yourself back to your intention, your story off the mat. Something where you could apply this practice to that might change your destiny.
slowly begin to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Inhale your arms all the way over your head and stretch from your fingers to your toes. And draw your knees into your chest and slowly make your way onto your right side and just take a moment and then find your way up to a comfortable seated position and bring your hands to your heart and let your eyes close Thank you so much for coming on, along on this journey with me today. It's my honor and pleasure to guide you. Namaste. Thank you everybody, namaste.